Although you may not have known her name, you have probably already seen Laure, most likely in the famous painting by French artist Édouard Manet, Olympia, made in 1863. We see Laure posed as a maid in the background, offering the white nude woman a bouquet of flowers. In recent years, Laure has rightfully gained more attention from art historians, encouraging investigations into the place of black people in 19th century European society and art. So what do we know about Laure? Unfortunately, very little. We don't even know her last name. Art historians have various theories about how she came to be an artist's model. Some suggest that Laure met Manet while she was working as a nursemaid in Paris, whilst others say they were introduced by friends. We know that Laure lived at 11 Rue de Vintimille in Paris, from a note in Manet's notebook, in which he describes her as Laure très belle négresse, Laure the very beautiful black woman. Avant-garde artists and writers lived in this neighbourhood of Paris, including Manet, who lived less than a 10-minute walk away from Laure, and at the time there would have been a small but visible population of black residents. Manet made three paintings of Laure, all within 12 months of each other, Tuileries Garden, Portrait of Laure and Olympia. Here she is seen in the right-hand corner of Manet's painting Children in the Tuileries Garden, made in the early 1860s. Manet's brush strokes are particularly sketchy and none of the figures have clear features. The implication is that Laure is rendered as a type, without individual characteristics. She occupies the role of black attendant, which we see so frequently in European historical depictions of black people. We see this role in Olympia too, although here Laure is presented as an attendant to a white sex worker in a brothel. By contrast, a year or so later, Manet made a portrait of Laure which puts her centre stage. Although art historians have previously approached this portrait as an anonymous study for Olympia, the art historian Dr Denise Murrell argues that it was made as a standalone portrait in line with other sympathetic depictions by Manet of Parisian outsiders, such as the absinthe drinker and the street musician. Notice how she wears the same outfit here as she does in Olympia, a pink dress with a high white collar and a head tie. Her head tie is made out of madras cloth, a lightweight cotton fabric. The cloth features in a recently opened exhibition in the Montserrat National Museum. It traces the history of Madras from its origins in India to its significance throughout the transatlantic slave trade. Laure's Madras head tie would have been fashionable at the time in Paris, but it would also have acted as a visual signifier of her blackness or otherness to white European viewers. There would have been similar implications in the head tie we see in a sketch by the French poet Baudelaire of his mistress, Jeanne Duval, who was a Haitian-born actor and dancer of mixed French and black African ancestry. Manet himself painted Duval, and Baudelaire referred to her as his black Venus. The three Manet images of Laure, as Morel explains, are collectively noteworthy because they not only manifest the new modern style of painting, but because they depict, as a documentary of sorts, the range of the roles, nanny, artist's model, brothel maid and more, with which free black Parisian women, just 15 years after abolition, gained an economic foothold and became a fixture in the daily life of Paris. What about other artists who Laure posed for? Laure is probably the model seen in Le Baiser Enfantin, The Childlike Kiss, by Jacques-Eugène Feyen. Here she is represented in the more conventional style of a genre painter. Notice the much smoother brush strokes compared to Manet's looser marks. The painting was displayed in the Salon in 1865, in the same year as Olympia. The white woman in Feyen's painting appears to be the mother of the two white children, dressed in regional clothing typical of Alsace in France. She holds up her youngest child to affectionately kiss the other child, who is held by Laure. Laure leans slightly backwards from the mother and children, subtly emphasising the different social spheres that the two women inhabit. Laure's smile arguably makes her the most emotionally legible and engaging person in this painting, although we are still left wanting to know more. Again, note that her yellow head wrap and gold earrings imply a certain exoticism, establishing a link to France's increasing colonial rule in the West Indies at the time. In 2014, Dr Denise Murrell published her thesis, Seeing Laure, which challenges the historical narrative that sees Laure as an oversimplified racist stereotype. Instead, Murrell argues, depictions of Laure not only reveal the evolving cultural hybridity among black Parisians at the time, but also help us to understand the fundamental role of the black female figure in the evolution of modern art. 
Paintings of Laure featured in the 2019 exhibition in Paris, Posing Modernity, the black model from Manet and Matisse to today, also curated by Marl. Laure has also been reimagined by many contemporary artists, such as Elizabeth Colomba, collagist Romare Bearden and Micheline Thomas.